Okay, last two weeks we've been working on this little application here. Um, basically, uh, it's just a form submit, but we're make, which we originally created in about five minutes. Um, we're now spending probably between all three videos, 45 minutes to an hour, uh, working on uh, this, making it mainly making it nice for mobile devices. And that's something I find about most programming actual functionality can be done pretty quickly um, but making it look nice and the user interface usually takes more than the functionality and more time to create than the functionality luckily we have tools uh, libraries out there like jQuery and jQuery mobile to make things look nice uh, especially for mobile devices um, and also work on desktops as we're working in a desktop here this can be brought up in a mobile device probably look more like this and it's very easy to click this gives you a little drop down on a phone automatically it will uh, bring up a your whatever you know a larger buttons because the phone the mobile browsers tend to default to that although we could also using jQuery mobile make larger buttons for those drop downs uh, on a desktop as well I prefer having the regular drop downs because if you have a long list you can always start typing on the keyboard and jump if everything's alphabetically uh, which it should be um, if you're writing code. Um, also things like um, this input here is a number input when you click it uh, on a mobile device it will bring up a number pad rather than the keyboard which allows you to easily put in numbers and if we did a regular form submit uh, HTML5 will check if there's letters like that in there, it will say, no, you can't have that. Unfortunately, we're using our own JavaScript to submit it, uh, so I think it, 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 it uh, ignores that, because we're just getting a value in submitting rather than submitting a form. All depends on how you do it, but if you were submitting a regular form, this would do error checks for you on if there's not a regular number in there. Um, but what we're going to work on today is once we fill out the information and we click submit either yes or no for is the PSI over 4500 um, which actually is very full it's actually over 4000 uh, is actually the cutoff so that's my bad we can actually just change that in the text but it doesn't matter since this isn't really being used um, and you can see we just submitted that information but when we submit it, it doesn't clear out this information, which would be nice, the comments and the ID number, so you can right away go into typing in the next one. It doesn't give the user really any information. Oh, this was sent, so we'll create an alert box that does that. And also, we're gonna throw in a little PHP uh, to grab an inventory number uh, you know, through a get form submit, which would be nice because then we can create QR codes, which I have tutorials on. If I remember, maybe I'll put a, a uh, uh, annotation somewhere that will link to my QR code video uh, and you can create QR codes put them on the bottles I think the hardest part about that is making some uh, a sticker uh, that would be water resistant since these bottles get wet um, I don't think heat would be too much of a problem because even though we go into fires hopefully the bottles uh, don't get too hot in fact as air comes out of them they get kind of cold and moist which would be I think more of a problem for the stickers anyway uh, hopefully I remember to put the annotation somewhere on the screen. If not, I'm sure someone will comment, and then I will. Um, and that will just basically allow you to scan with your phone or anything with a webcam, and it will automatically bring up this application and input the inventory number for that bottle. And so you would have that option as well. So that's what we're working on today. Let's get started. We'll go to our code here. And first thing we'll do is a simple thing. Uh, we will add a alert box here. And we will just say sent. Uh, whatever. You can have whatever message. Oh, thank you for submitting. Sent, comma, thank you. Smiley face. Okay. We'll save that. Now, when we go back to our page here, type in the bottle number, tester, and whether we click the yes or no button, we should get, oh, refresh the page first. Type in an inventory number, obviously choose your, your information. You notice when I refresh the page, it lost who we were, and that's what we're gonna work on here in a moment. We'll just say blah, blah, blah. Nope, and it says sent, thank you. Yes, and it still says sent. 
thank you. You know, you get the same information. Um, so we're done with that. That that's just. And if we go here, you can see that information was sent. Um, next, let's work on clearing out the comment box and the ID, so you can start inputting a new. So this, I'm working on this for for efficiency. I want you to be able to go from one bottle to the next bottle to the next bottle and just type in this information fast and get it done and over with. Uh, unlike what we're working with now at work, where we have paperwork that you fill out got to find a pen and fill in this information. Sometimes it's hard to read the ID number, so it'd be nice if there was a QR code that also had the ID number written under it in a visible place. Um, so just get things done a little bit faster, a little bit more efficient. What I'm going to work on now, though, as I said, is clearing out the information from the bottle. So we're going to say, look at, this is after we do our post submit. We're going to say, and before our, well, it doesn't really matter if it goes before or after our alert. I'm going to put it before. Uh, we're going to say, look at the elements with pound, which means the ID of, and in this case, bottle. If we scroll down here a little bit, you can see our input here for our ID bottle. The number input is bottle. So we're saying, look at that element. And before we said dot, oops, doo -doo -doo -doo. said dot val like so, and that was retrieving the value. Well, if we put anything inside these parentheses instead of retrieving, it's replacing. So we're just going to put two parentheses, I'm sorry, two quotation marks inside the parentheses, and that will say set the value to, and in this case, nothing. And we will do the same thing, look for the element with the ID of comments, and set its value to nothing. So now we'll save that, go to our form here. Let's refresh the page, which updates the code. Another nice thing about doing things on the web is you can update the code, and the next time the person goes to the page, it will be updated. We'll say 8899 for the inventory number. Choose a user. Oops. Choose a engine. Type whatever for comments, or just leave comments blank. And when we click Submit, we get sent a thank you. It cleared out those inf those uh, uh, two things, so I can start putting in the next bottle. Comments and I mean, if there's no problems, I don't need to put comments, so I can just keep going like so. And if we go to, oops, that was it. To here, you can see all those by Mike Jones, Station 21, Ninja 21, with different ID numbers. They're all full. Everything's good. Once again, Google automatically puts time and date, which is nice. You don't have to worry about putting that into your code. And um, so we're doing good so far. Um, also, uh, we, we, we're not really putting any error check here, because if for some reason there is some sort of connection error and this isn't submitted, they're still getting an alert saying sent thank you. Um, and I'm actually not sure how to do an error check in this case. If I was submitting to my own PHP code, I could you know, detect, retrieve information and say, did it connect? But I'm sure there's a way to post check error. I'm not gonna worry about this since this is just a tutorial, but in real world situation, you probably would want to have some sort of check to make sure it's actually uh, sent to the server. You know, If you lost interconnection, you click the button, we're not gonna get any errors here on the screen saying that, it, you know, not available and since everything here so far is running locally you would not know that this connection error is is happening um, once again just for tutorial uses I'm mentioning that but not going to do that but once again as long as you have internet connection that shouldn't be an issue going back up to the very top of our code here so once again with our jQuery we're saying once the document is ready once the page is loaded is when we start running all our JavaScript. So what we want to do is we want to store uh, or we want to retrieve local storage which actually we should probably um, create the local storage first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here oops and right here what I'm going to do local storage is so simple in the past, I've played with cookies a little bit, and they were kind of a pain in the butt. Local storage just seems so much easier, because all I have to do is type in local storage, 
dot, and the dot is what it's going to be stored as. Oops. What it's going to be stored as. So we want to store to the local device, whether it be your computer, uh, phone, tablet, whatever, a variable called user, and it's storing it for your site. So if they go to another site that has user, it's not going to affect that. So here we're going to set it equal to a variable called user, which we created up here, which you chose from the drop down. Same thing, we'll say local storage dot user, or not, not user, station equals station local storage dot truck equals truck. So again, we're saying store locally a variable called user and the value we're putting into there is our variable which we create up here uh, which is the user or station or truck that's chosen from the drop down. So we'll save that and refresh this page. So you notice when we refreshed it we lost our information. So I can say Mike Jones station 22, engine 22, uh, put in a number there click submit, it's submitted. Right now our information is saved, but if I press F5 to refresh the page, you can see, so if I exit out of the program or refresh the page, it loses that value. But we did just write it so it's stored locally, so what we need to do now is call it locally. Um, call the local data. So, now that we've stored that, I'm going to go up here And uh, we're going to, when the page loads, retrieve that information. So I'm going to say find the element with the ID of user, set the value equal to local storage dot user. I'm going to do the same thing for the station. So look at the element with the ID of station and set its value to local storage dot station dollar sign parentheses quotation ID. We're looking at the element truck and replace its value with local storage dot truck and now if I spelt everything right wait something's not color coded properly what am I missing storage. Someone at home now is going, ah, I know what it is, but I'm not, oh, because I put these in quotations, they're not supposed to be in quotations. Thank you. Thank you, viewer at home that was yelling that at me. Okay, so now when document, our page, is ready, meaning it's done loading, first things we're going to do is we're going to look at the local storage and set the values. Let's go see how that works. I'm going to tell you right now a little secret. We're not done yet. It's not going to work properly. Okay. So refresh this page. We'll say 4588. Eight. We're going to say Mike Jones, Station 22. Now you notice when I'm clicking the drop down, it's highlighting the proper things. But it's not changing the values here when we refresh the page. So. Mike Jones, station 20, engine 20, submit. OK. Refresh the page. Well, station 20, I shouldn't have done that because that was the first ones on the list. So let's, let's do that again. We'll say Mike Jones, station 22, engine 22, bottle, blah, blah, blah. Yes, sent. Thank you. Now if I refresh the page, you'll see that it says John Smith, uh, station 20, engine 20. We go to our form here. You can see that Mike Jones, station 22, engine 22, submit the last one. Let's just go 
nine nine zero zero. Submit that. Thank you. Go here. Wait for it to appear. Nine nine zero zero. You can see it says Mike Jones, station twenty two, engine twenty two. Coming back here though, that's not what it says. And that's because it's setting those values but not updating the drop down box default view. This is simple to fix. With a lot of things in jQuery Mobile, since it's adding these CSS themes and making it look nice, to update them, you need to refresh them. So what we're going to say here is, once again, look at the elements with the ID of user dot select menu. So we're looking at that element. We're looking at select menu. And what we're going to tell it to do is simply refresh. It's that simple um, if you spell menu right. Select menu. So we'll do the same thing for the two other elements. So we'll say dollar sign, per, uh, parentheses, quotations, uh, pound for the ID of station, dot select menu, refresh. And here we're going to say the same thing for the truck. Pound. There might be an option to refresh all. I don't know. And that would uh, shorten our code up a little bit. I should look into that. I'm sure if there is, someone will comment below. Uh, if not, I'm sure you could write out a little code that does it. But for a simple little application like this, we'll just do it this way. Now, if I spelt everything right, we come back here and we hit F5 to refresh the page. Oh, look! It brought up our local storage, Mike Jones, Station 22. And how many times I hit F5, it brings up that information. If I fill out our form, put in ID number, I'll choose Sam Johnson, Station 24, Engine 24, and click Submit. Now if I refresh the page, oh, it saved that information. I can even change that stuff. And if I don't submit the form and I hit F5, it brings back the local storage stuff. Great. We're almost done with this code. Um, we've got one thing left to do, and that is I want to be able to um, pass it information. So let's go to our code here. Now you'll notice that our we call this index.html. I'm going to exit out of the program here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move the index.html. Now we could move that to index.html. PHP because we want this to be a PHP file, but I'm actually going to call it something else because we're in our SCBA folder. Um, Self-contained breathing apparatus, by the way, is what that stands for. Um, we have our bottle checklist, but we also have our pack checklist for SCBA. So we're going to have different forms here. So we're not going to make this the default index. We'll just call this bottle.php. So now if I go back here and hit F5, it's going to, in my case, because I have indexing on, on my web server, you'll see that we have our PHP instead of index.html. I'm going to click that, and the form looks the same. It'll work the same at this point. But since it's PHP now, we can now pass it some variables. And actually, I guess technically you could leave it as, a, uh, as an HTML and pull apart the location to get variables. Uh, I've never seen a clean way of doing that. So we're going to do it with PHP. So obviously in this case you would need a server uh, running PHP to do this. You couldn't do this locally because PHP is a server side um, scripting language. So I'm going to say Vim go into our uh, bottle PHP here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some very simple little PHP code here at the top. So, so you say uh, greater than, I'll make this bigger so you can read it. Uh, I'm sorry, less than dollar sign PHP, close it with a dollar sign, um, uh, and then a greater than symbol. Actually, this is going to be one line, so we can actually put all this on one line here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called bottle. We're going to say equals dollar sign underscore get inside some uh, brackets here, inside quotations bottle. And then don't forget our semicolon there. So what we're doing here is in the PHP code we're creating a variable called bottle. 
This has nothing to do with the JavaScript, so the JavaScript's not going to see this, recognize this variable at all. What it's going to do is it's going to look for a get submit variable called bottle and put its value into the PHP variable of bottle. So what we can do now is come down here to our HTML code where we have our bottle inventory number here and we can give it a default value if we say value equals we can say here one two three four if we were to save that and go in here and refresh every time you start this application it's going to put one two three four there obviously we don't want that because the bottle isn't always going to be one two three four what we can do though is we can pass it some information here so what we're going to do is we're going to once again put our tags for PHP code we're going to say echo dollar sign bottle technically we could you could do this all in in this one line rather than two separate spots but in other cases you may have more than one variable and it's good to have that up at the top uh, in my opinion so if I did this properly what it's going to do is we save that if we hit F5 to refresh nothing we, we don't get anything in here but up here if we say dollar sign bottle equals 5599 and hit enter it puts that value in there so now we can take this address for bottle uh, 5599 make a QR code once again I'll try to remember to put an annotation or in the description of the video to my video on QR codes put that on each bottle but with a different inventory number for each one and when you scan it it brings up this automatically puts in that number now uh, technically this works if there's no um, bottle uh, information there uh, it will just leave it blank technically I guess if you want to be technical about stuff you probably could do an if-then statement but I don't see a problem with it um, I thought maybe it might create an error log here but apparently it didn't, a PHP error log, and I do have error logs turned on on my server, so it's not even going to fill up an error log or anything, which was would be my one concern. So that's it. We are done. We can now either open up this application with no bottle number and have it be blank, or we can scan a bottle and have it put in the bottle number using a get form submit. And what I can do is I can scan the first barcode, submit it, and I can either close this out and go and scan the next one, or I could just type in the next barcode and keep going, or inventory number and keep going. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, I think it took me three tutorials to do this, probably 45 minutes an hour for this entire application. Really the main functionality as far as the form submit was done in the first five minutes. Um, we spent the next 45 minutes to an hour creating this. Uh, and a lot of that was explaining, so probably half an hour to 45 minutes, you could have had this application done and save, uh, you know, your work a lot of paperwork because paperwork builds up, and lots of times that paperwork has to be entered into a computer anyway. Um, so this is our first, my first real tutorial on jQuery Mobile, um, at least these, this last first series on it. Um, once again, let me know what you think. Did you like this? kind of longer tutorials showing more, which I think with jQuery Mobile um, might be a good thing. We kind of got some jQuery, jQuery Mobile, JavaScript, PHP, HTML, HTML5, all in this. Or do you prefer when I do simple little individual tutorials, which I will always do because that's what I prefer. I prefer a tutorial on this is how you create a drop-down box. This is a tutorial on how you create a comment box that you can submit. Um, rather than longer tutorials. But some people like have asked me once again to do real world scenario applications, um, which is just, you know, it's just putting together this stuff from the smaller tutorials, but maybe their minds just work different than me, where I much rather just see, I need to do this, show me how to do this, I can figure out the rest or watch other videos on the rest. Anyway, comment below, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I'll try to put a link in the description to uh, this this application online so you can play with it. Uh, once again, thank you for watching uh, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.